Hi there. I'm going to have a quick look today at another MIDI orchestration. It's a demo track I've written for Studio Woodwinds Library. It's called Junkyard Sortie. And I wrote it um, on at the piano keyboard here first and then um, started splitting it out into the orchestral section. So I'll take you quickly through my workflow um, and we'll have a, a look at how I've kind of split the parts out and then added colour with the percussion and all that kind of stuff. And then at the end, we'll have a quick look at my master chain and a few little things I've done to add just a little bit of extra, those extra couple of percent here and there. So first up, I'm going to put my headphones on. Just so we've got some context, let's have a quick listen down to the piano part. So this is um, what I wrote in, um, in kind of in sections, some bits which were a bit tricky to play, kind of worked out roughly what I wanted to do. Some things I just had an idea, so I hammered away at the keyboard and then tidied it up a little bit, but it sounds roughly like this. Okay, so first of all, let's have a quick listen to uh, what that became in the final track. And then we'll go in and have a little look at some of the different ways that I've been interlocking things and uh, using contrast. Obviously, I've tried to make this um, very woodwind heavy, probably more um, woodwindy than if I was just orchestrating this piece. Normally, I would do um, in order to try and show the library off um, to its best advantage. But let's have a quick listen through and I'll highlight some sections as we go. Okay, so let's solo the woodwind and all of the brass, first of all. And you'll hear how these are generally um, the things that are contrasting against each other. Thank you. 
So there's quite a lot of interplay going on there. We're starting with the trumpets and the trombones down the bottom there. Then the horns come in with the string, so you can see here. And the horns are basically doubling the high strings at this point. All of the woodwinds come back in as one giant block at this point, at bar 13. And they're doubled at that stage by the xylophone. Just solo these as well. Here we go. I've deliberately not put um, an accent in the second half of the bar there, um, just to make it a little bit um, off balance, off centre, so that you're not quite sure where the accent's falling, where the next bar's starting. So we've got that succession of kind of threes, da, 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 ba, da, ba, da, then finally jumps back into the next section where we get back to that familiar rhythm. And again here, we've got the woodwinds kind of leading this. Now here where we have these high um, octave uh, things and the kind of harmonies around that that are coming in, I thought I'd bring those in starting off with the trumpets. And then we pass it around a bit. So the violin ones get it first. Then the piccolos uh, and flutes. Then the horns. Then back to the woodwinds. Uh, and we add this kind of legato line at the top as well. We've got a sweep there happening, which is happening in the harp. Uh, if I solo that. And the xylophone just towards the end. And then from 23 here, we've got this Celeste is kind of leading this, um, this pattern. but joined by the violins. So if we listen to all of those together. And then we kind of bring the woodwinds in and out in these big chords. So with everything else that's going on, let's unsolo. There we've got, um, you know, you'll see here, I've left, a, I've left all my kind of dirty linen in here. So here you'll see we've got the piano guide track. So I, ba I basically have taken this, um, my kind of hammered out piano track. I've dragged it down to, to kind of experiment with it and see what sounds best on which instrument. So I've got some stuff on the trumpet one staccato. And then for that, just the last chord, I'm using the tenuto and then trumpet two is taking uh, the other part of that. So it's a it's a little bit of a cheat. I've got one chord here, which has got three notes in it. So I'm kind of mimicking a four player section, but I have left the occasional squeeze in there just to add a bit of extra crunch. So, um, and then as, as you can see, the tenutos take the final chord. So those just on their own sound like this. So it's really just it's really just for effect and just to kind of stab that out. Um, what else have we got doing that? So we've got some stuff going on down here uh, in the horns and bones. So the trombones are, are doubling those kind of stabby sounds, but down the, the bottom. So they're taking the lower parts. And then the horns are carving out a little pattern in the middle of that. So if we listen to that all together. And then that is cutting through all the rest of the stuff there. And 
and they're using a nice kind of close voiced uh, brass choir sound just to just with I'm just going a tiny bit into the brass here, into the into the um, edgy section, just so you get that slight edge that comes up at the top of the notes. I can see a little thing that needs correcting here. Not quite sure what's happened there. Um, you get these sometimes little artifacts that appear in the MIDI data. And then we go into this final section. So the marimba takes the lead at this point. Let's turn the solo off. And here really the thing is that I've got these descending lines that are being doubled um, with the woodwinds to give them extra thickness and richness. And then the other, um, some of the other woodwinds are in there just doing these little chromatic patterns just to make it really nice and kind of textured and crunchy towards the end. Um, just to give you a little bit of colour as it's going along there. So let's have a quick look at what's going on in the rhythm section. So I've got a couple of patches here um, from Hans Zimmer percussion, uh, timps, a few of the different drums, and I've picked a kind of nice um, clicky kind of sound. So let's solo those. So I'm doubling the bass drum with the timps. The extra punch. And then later on, when we get into the kind of rhythmic section, so you can hear there using um, just one of the very lightest um, hits on on a kind of uh, slightly metallic-y, papery metallic-y sounding drum, and just and I've carved a bit of the bottom end out of that as well. So it's just very very light and sprinkly. Um, I like the fact that it's that it's um, because you've got multiple players. It's not totally precise. It's slightly it gives you that kind of uh, nice extra bit of interest in the rhythm track. Um, and then we've got some straightforward symbols down here. These are I just unfreeze that to open it so I can show you. So that's coming from uh, the percussion library, Spitfire percussion library. Um, that's uh, some of this stuff is frozen, by the way, because I'm running ScreenFlow, Pro Tools and Logic at the same time. And so even this iMac Pro would fall over under that load. So in here, what I've done is I've selected for the harp sections, I've selected the pedaling in the Spitfire harp, set the pedaling and then just played on the white note so I can get a really nice um, naturalistic sort of feel. So the last thing just to quickly look at is my master chain and I'll show you what I'm using here. I'm using the Precision Case Stereo, which I've used on a couple of things before. It's just giving a tiny extra little bit of stereo width. I've got my outboard chain here, which is going through an API EQ, just giving a little bit of low shelf and high shelf, a couple of dB of, of extra EQ there, and then um, going into an SSL compressor with a very gentle compression. Um, Coming back after that, we've got one more of the uh, case stereos, which is just opening it up again a tiny little bit more as you come back from the compressor. I've got a tape emulation plugin from FabFilter here, the Saturn, which um, it gets very clean. It's just giving all of these things are just very, very incremental um, bits and pieces. And then finally, just to kind of keep control of my overall level, I'm just, um, I'm just, I've got a final limiter, the L2, which I quite like the sound of when it's used very, very gently. So I'll just show you um, the beginning without any of this stuff, and then I'll put it all back in. So with nothing at all on. So it's taking the signal and just doing incremental adjustments to it. So I hope that was a useful. Very quick dive into another MIDI orchestration. Um, again, with these kind of things, I'm kind of, uh, it's a real sketch. Um, I'm not really going, getting too, I, I'm, I'm trying to show what you can do quickly and easily with these libraries. I'm not getting too 
detailed and fiddling for ages and ages with each individual track. I'm getting it to sound right. And then in context, once you've got everything going, you don't have to be too kind of particular about each individual track. It's a real thing that can kind of slow you down and destroy your um, your kind of vibe and inspiration is by is by getting too hung up on um trying to make every individual track sound as kind of realistic as possible. And I kind of compare it to um, a mix engineer getting a, a board mix up uh, very quickly and not soloing the bass drum and spending an hour trying to make the ultimate bass drum sound only to unsolo and realize that it doesn't sound right in the context of the track. So um, that's my approach to, to this kind of MIDI orchestration. So thanks very much for watching. See you on the next one. Bye bye.